As the U.S. planes began to return from battle during World War II, there were noticeable patterns in the number and placement of bullet holes. So here's the dilemma. You don't want your planes to get shot down by enemy fighters, so you armor them. But attaching armor makes the plane heavier, and heavier planes are less maneuverable and use more fuel. Just as too much armor creates a problem, so does not armoring planes enough. Somewhere in between is the answer, and the reason a team of mathematicians, including Abraham Wald, was gathered together to eventually find the solution. The generals wanted to know how much more armor should be put on the planes where the bullet holes are seen. But Wald responded that putting armor where the holes were was not the solution. Hmm. They needed to put the armor where the bullet holes were not. There were bullet holes in the fuselage, the fuel system, and of course, the rest of the plane. But not nearly as many planes returned with holes in the engine. Wald asked the important question, and that question was, where were the missing holes? Surely it couldn't be a case of luck or aim by the enemy. The answer was simple. The ones with more bullet holes in the engines were the planes that didn't make it home. Since planes could sustain hits to the fuselage and other parts of its body, but not the engine, place the armor on the engines. Protect the place with the greatest vulnerability. So that's what they did. Wald's recommendations were quickly put into effect and were still being used by the Navy and Air Force in future wars in Korea and Vietnam. A mathematician, Wald saw the solution differently than his peers, who had vastly more knowledge of aerial combat. He asked the same questions that mathematicians always ask. What assumptions are we making? And are they justified? Jordan Ellenberg's book, How Not to Be Wrong, the Power of Mathematical Thinking explores these questions and many others in the pursuit of greater mathematical thinking.